at Brave Tribe. This is our podcast all about speaking up, empowering yourselves to speak against harassment. This is a topic that is inspired from some of our past conversations. I know a lot of you girls have experienced someone calling you a derogatory word, maybe the B word, or that you notice a lot of kids using offensive language at school. There can be a variety of reasons why this is happening. Maybe there is a boy that is calling you a derogatory word and it is their way of asserting dominance or making you feel less than. They may do this because they themselves feel insecure or inadequate. It may be a way to make them sound more cool or more part of the popular group at school. Whatever may be happening though, or the reasons behind it, it is not appropriate. In this podcast, I want you to take away that you have the right to stand up and to speak out, to set a boundary for yourself. And if that boundary is not respected, that then you seek out the support you deserve to have so that you are treated with respect in the spaces that you are in. And when you do this, I know it can feel uncomfortable at first, but it is so important because when you're doing this, you're doing it for yourself, but you're also doing it for every other girl or person in the room. It's saying that this behavior is unacceptable and that we all need to be treated with respect. We are always setting boundaries for ourselves. So don't feel that you have to be perfect. This is something that we are always practicing and becoming more confident in. But here on the Brave Tribe, this is a safe place to talk about boundary setting and to get the support you might need from myself and all the other girls so that you can move forward in your life feeling safe and secure. First, let's make sure we understand the definition of harassment. Harassment is defined as behaviors that are unwanted, unwelcome. They create an intimidating, hostile, or offensive environment for the recipient. It can take many forms, including verbal, physical, or written actions. Sexual harassment is defined as when someone says or does something of a sexual nature that makes you feel uncomfortable, embarrassed, or scared. This can include unwanted touching, sexual comments or gestures, pressure to do something sexual, or spreading rumors about your sexuality. These are examples of harassment and sexual harassment unwelcome sexual comments, jokes, or gestures, spreading rumors or gossip about someone's sexual activity or orientation, sending unsolicited sexual messages or explicit images via text or social media, unwanted physical contact, such as groping or brushing up against someone in a sexual manner, pressure to engage in sexual activity or repeated requests for a date, stalking or following someone in a way that makes them feel uncomfortable or afraid, making sexually suggestive or explicit remarks about someone's appearance or clothing, intentionally making someone feel uncomfortable or intimidated through sexual behavior or language, making sexual advances towards someone who has made it clear that they are not interested. There are three types of sexual harassment. Visual would include inappropriate instant messages or email, bathroom wall graffiti, showing someone inappropriate pictures that make them feel uncomfortable, and obscene gestures. Verbal would include dirty jokes, comments about someone's body, spreading rumors of a sexual nature. And physical would include grabbing or touching someone that makes them feel uncomfortable, un unwanted hugging or kissing, pulling down someone's pants. A question that sometimes comes up is what is the difference between flirting and sexual harassment? Let's look at flirting. Flirting is welcome attention. Flirting goes both ways. It's reciprocal. Both parties are participating in that. Flirting makes you feel attractive. Flirting makes you feel in control. Flirting makes you feel good about yourself. And flirting is legal. Sexual harassment, however, is different. 
sexual harassment makes you feel uncomfortable. Sexual harassment is one-sided. There is a power imbalance there. Sexual harassment feels degrading. It makes you feel powerless. It makes you feel bad about yourself. And sexual harassment is a violation of your school rules and is illegal. So what are you to do if you experience harassment? The first thing I want you to do is trust your instincts and recognize when something doesn't feel right. In that moment, take a deep breath. I want you to stay calm and composed. It's natural to feel angry or upset, but responding with anger may only escalate the situation. So take a deep breath and stay as calm and as composed as possible. Remember, when someone goes low, we go high. So rise up in your behavior and stay calm. The second thing that I want you to do is I want you to speak up and clearly assert your boundaries. Let the person know that their language or behavior is unacceptable, that you will not tolerate it. I want you to use firm but respectful language and avoid insulting them back. The third thing is I want you to walk away, especially if this person continues to use derogatory language or behaves disrespectfully. It's essential to remove yourself from the situation. You have the right to be treated with respect, and you should not subject yourself to abusive behavior. And the fourth is to seek help from a trusted adult. Talking to your parent, a teacher, or a counselor about what has happened, they can help you first process your feelings and then also provide guidance on how to handle the situation. Remember, you do not have to do this alone. You might have a friend who shares that they are being harassed by someone. And here are some steps on how to support that friend. First, listen to that friend. Believe them in what they're sharing with you. Help her identify and set boundaries. Encourage her to seek out professional support and offer to talk to a trusted adult with her. That could be going to a teacher or a counselor at school, talking with her parent or your parent at home. Remember, though, it is not your responsibility to solve this problem. Your role is being a supportive and caring friend that encourages your friend to seek the support that they need. I have created a boundary phrases worksheet that has lots of boundary phrases that you can use. I think it would be important for you to print this out and for you to look over the different phrases and role play with your parent, a sibling, a friend. When we role play, we get in the practice of saying these different phrases, which can help us feel more comfortable when we have to use them in the moment. You can also role play with yourself by doing this in front of a mirror. It can be a great way to get you comfortable, feel more empowered, to get practice in using a firm voice. Here are some of my favorite boundary phrases that I have pulled from the boundary setting workbook. The first, please stop using that language with me. That's not an appropriate thing to say to someone. I don't want to talk to someone who calls me names. Stop. I don't like it when you touch me like that. Please don't send me messages like that. It's inappropriate. No, I don't want to go out with you. Please stop asking. Please stop following me. It's making me feel uncomfortable. Please stop. Your behavior is making me feel uncomfortable. This is your last warning. If you don't stop, I'll have to get someone involved. If you can't stop using that language, I'll have to report it to a teacher or administrator. Practice some of these phrases. Say them to yourself in a mirror. Role play this with a parent. Role play this with a friend. Share it with your friend. This can be something that you can do to help support one another. And remember, brave friend, that there are lots of resources and support available. Most importantly, remember, no one has the right to make you feel uncomfortable or unsafe with their language or actions. Don't let derogatory language or harassing behaviors bring you down. Stand up for yourself and demand the respect that you deserve. 
if you are being mistreated, please talk to a trusted adult. You can come and share that here in the Brave Tribe with me. I understand that it may feel embarrassing, but remember that the person behaving inappropriately is the one at fault, not you. In our call on Sunday, we talked a lot about the different things that you see happening in your school. So if someone is calling you the B word, set that boundary. Tell them that their language is offensive. If they continue to use that, speak to an adult at school. If you feel uncomfortable doing that, see if you can bring a friend with you. If that's still uncomfortable, talk to your parent at home and have their support in reaching out to the school to address this. I know some of the other girls shared that sometimes they see offensive language written in the bathroom stalls and that sometimes it's reported to the hall monitors, but yet you still see the offensive language in the bathroom stall. So if you are reporting something to an adult and nothing is happening, I want you to think about who is that next person that has a little bit more power than the person you're reporting it to. So if it's a hall monitor that's an adult that works at the school, perhaps then taking it to the school administrator, perhaps the principal or a dean of students, speaking with a school counselor, these could be the next steps. If after speaking to them, it still does not change in your school, you probably have a school board that you can then speak to or a superintendent over the county that you could speak to. I hope that this information has empowered you to speak up and to set the boundaries that you deserve to have to keep you safe. I'll be sharing more information over the course of this week to help give you the skills that you need to continue to stand up for yourself. Brave Tribe, continue to live life bravely, and I can't wait to see you on our next call.